by the age of 42, he'd already spent 25 years in prison. Well, good morning, and it's my final day here in Luxembourg. I've really enjoyed this city and I can't wait to return. Every morning I've taken the bus into town, but today I'm going to walk through all the parks and see what I can discover en route. I'm currently walking through the Notre Dame Cemetery. The cemetery was founded in 1755 and they're still taking burials today. It's always interesting walking through a graveyard looking at all the variety of monuments and the carvings on the statues. Let's have a little look around and see what we can find in here. It's very peaceful and tranquil walking around the cemetery in the early morning. Quite a lot of the graves are actually family vaults, so that would explain why people are still being buried here today. I'm now going to take a little walk around and just see if I can find any interesting graves, perhaps those of historical value. Behind me is the monument to all the French soldiers who'd lost their lives during the First World War. And on the ground is the tomb of the unknown soldier, a soldier from Luxembourg who could not be identified from the battlefield. I do enjoy walking around a cemetery, looking at all the stones and all the different monuments. And in this part of the cemetery here, there are some really superb monuments, huge family mausoleums and family vaults, not to mention some very interesting graves. The grave behind me is that of Jean Antoine Zinnen, a Luxembourg composer who wrote the music to Ons Himecht. He died on the 16th of May 1898, aged 71. Behind me is the grave of Friedrich Wilhelm Voigt. He was born in Tilsen in Prussia in 1849, modern day Sovetsk in Kaliningrad. He was a career criminal. At the age of 14, he received his first prison sentence and sentenced to two weeks in prison. By the age of 42, 
He'd already spent 25 years in prison. But despite spending all this time in prison, his most audacious crime was yet to come. In 1906, Voigt planned and pulled off his most audacious crime. He disguised himself as a Prussian military officer, went to the town of Kopetnik in eastern Berlin, recruited some men to help him pull off a robbery. That robbery took place at Municipal Treasury in Kopetnik. He took away 4,000 marks, a small fortune in those days. For his crime, Voigt was sentenced to four years in prison, but only served two years because he was pardoned by the Kaiser. Kaiser Wilhelm II referred to him as an amiable scoundrel. But Voigt wasn't the first person to be pardoned by a king for committing an audacious crime. Back in 1671, Colonel Thomas Blood decided to steal the crown jewels from the Tower of London. He had befriended the jewel house keeper, a man called Talbot Edwards, in the weeks before, and on the night of the robbery, overpowered him and made away with the crown jewels. He didn't get very far and was apprehended down by the Thames. King Charles II pardoned him as well, even though the two crimes were committed 235 years apart. There are still some similarities between them. Both men committed audacious crimes. Both men were pardoned by a king. And both men went on to have a, a really successful life from the proceeds of committing that crime. Colonel Blood was given land in Ireland which yielded an income of £500 per year. Voigt, on the other hand, wrote a book which became a bestseller and he toured Europe, the States and Canada, signing autographs, becoming a little bit of a celebrity. Even Madame Tussauds made a waxwork of him. Today in Kopetnik there's a statue outside of Town Hall. I doubt there are many career criminals in the world who have had statues made of them. If you know of any, then let me know and leave a comment in the comments section below. And if you know of any other audacious crimes, be sure to leave a comment about them as well. I've just walked into another one of the, uh, the parks here in Luxembourg. It turns out that I was actually in this park yesterday. This is the Edith Klein Park, but I've come into the park from a different way. And on the way in, I spotted the Lambert Radu, an old fortification that had lain hidden for years. I only discovered it some years ago when they were putting in the car park. The best view of the Radu is actually from the car park. So let's go downstairs and take a look. the chapel to St. Quirinus. Quirinus Stenesis was a Roman centurion who was martyred in Rome in the year 116 AD. 
St Carinus was once the patron saint of Luxembourg from the years 1544 to 1666. Patron saint of Luxembourg today is Willy Brod. He was a missionary born in Northumbria in England. Willy Brod was the first bishop of Utrecht from the year 695 to 739. The viaduct behind me is called the Passerelle. It was built between 1859 and 1861 by the Waring Brothers of New York. The company was founded in 1841 and specialised in building bridges, but folded in 1870 due to lack of work. The viaduct is 290 metres long, has 24 arches and is 45 metres above the valley floor. Also behind me is another building site. It seems that everywhere I go in Luxembourg, they're digging it up. If it isn't putting in new tramways, it's doing something else down here in the Petruzzo Valley. It's been very difficult to film without the noise of um, mechanical engineering going on in the background. But I guess needs must here in Luxembourg. I've just walked into the Place Guillaume, past yet another building site. They're even digging up this place as well. Place Guillaume is popular with tourists and locals alike because all the cafes surround the square. Behind me is rather interesting artwork. It looks rather impressive when viewed at the right angle. There's a plaque up on the wall to uh, Jean Antoine Zinnen, Luxembourg's composer, who probably lived on the square, hence the plaque. There's even a road named after him up in the Limpetsburg area of the city. My time in Luxembourg has now come to an end. I sadly have to go back to the airport. I've had a great time here, just walking around, looking at all the sights, and I can't wait to return. I hope you've enjoyed watching this video and watching all the previous videos as well. If you have, please leave a comment in the comment section below and be sure to hit that subscribe button to follow my journey. So where am I going to next? Wait and see. Thanks for watching.